In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to install Drupal using the command line. This is the way the experts tend to prefer to do their installations. It is fairly technical, and it does involve several Unix commands, which might seem rather cryptic if you're not used to using them. If you are a Linux person, great, you're going to feel right at home. If you're not, don't worry, I'm going to give you all the steps you need, and if you still don't feel comfortable using the command line, you can always go back to the FTP method we reviewed in the tutorial, Installing Drupal Using FTP. But even if you do prefer the less techie FTP method, it doesn't hurt to have some familiarity with what is involved in installing and working with Drupal from the command line. There are a few prerequisites we need to go over before we can start our install. First, you're going to need web hosting that meets Drupal's requirements and enables you to SSH into the server. SSH is a method for giving you command line access to your web server. It is considered a more advanced feature though, and is less commonly found in general web hosting packages. You'll want to check with your hosting provider or server admin if your server is set up for it. For more information on the types of hosting available, see the tutorial, Installation Requirements and Options. If you don't have hosting with SSH, you can get a free trial account at webenable.com. This will still allow you to follow along with this tutorial. Also, if you have a Mac or Linux machine and have a web stack installed, you can work locally using your computer's own command prompt. To work with a remote server, though, you will need a terminal emulator on your personal computer. On a Windows machine, I recommend using PuTTY. You can download the standalone version by Googling PuTTY or going to the page directly at greenend.org. The portable version of PuTTY is also included in the Webmaster Tools Kit available at level10design.com. On a Mac, you can simply use an application called Terminal that's included as a part of your OS. For more on SSH clients, see the tutorial, Essential Webmasters Tools. There are two general ways of doing a command line installation. Using only Unix commands, or using a library of helper scripts called Drush. Drush is a command line interface for Drupal. It provides a Swiss army knife of tools that simplify many of the common things we'd want to do on our server. Effectively, it's a set of command line macros for managing Drupal. So let's take a look at the comparison between the two steps. With our Unix only command, the first thing we'd want to do is set up our database. Then we'd go and fetch the Drupal archive, we extract the archive, and move the files to where we want our Drupal sites. Then we can run back to the web browser and run through Drupal's installer. With Drush, our first step is to create a database, the same as the Unix version. The second step is to go and get the Drush archive, extract the files. This time we just create an alias so that we can use it anywhere on our server. Now we can use Drush's commands to do the rest of the steps. Drush is a simplified version for fetching our Drupal archive and moving the files. And then the last thing we can do is a one-line install of Drupal. Now it might look like there's a little bit more on the Drush side, but in reality, it A, does simplify things a little bit during installation, but also B, gives us a lot of extra tools to help us manage our site down the road. To get started, we're going to want to log into our web server using our SSH client. So I'm going to go ahead and launch PuTTY. And if you're on a Mac, this is where you'd want to use the terminal application instead. I'm going to put in the domain name of the server I'm trying to connect to. And now it's going to ask me for my login credentials. So I'm going to put in my username and my password. And now we're connected into our server. I now can start installing Drupal using just the command line. I'm also going to want to go ahead and just clean this up so it's a little easier to read. The first step is to create our database. Many hosts offer database administration tools that enable us to do this using a web browser. We took a look at a couple of these in the tutorial, installing Drupal using FTP. In this tutorial, though, we're going to go through it on the command line. Creating a database requires only a single command. What this command is doing is it's telling the MySQL engine that using the user Acme Exam, we want to create a new database called Acme Exam underscore tutorial. So I just click enter. It's going to ask me for a password for security reasons. And our new database is created. We can check that by looking at our PHP MyAdmin. And here we see our new database. Now, of course, there are no tables in this database yet. That's going to be up to Drupal's installer to put the information in here. The next steps we're going to want to do is to go ahead and download and install Drush from Drupal.org. But before I do that, I want to get a handle of where I am on my web server. So I'm going to go ahead and issue an ls command 
The ls command just gives me a list of the files and directories of whatever folder I'm currently in. What I notice is that I'm one level below public underscore HTML. And that's good because that means I'm in a non-web accessible directory. This is a good place to install Drush. So now I'll just go ahead and download it from Drupal.org. To do that, I'm just going to use a wget command. The syntax is really pretty simple. wget followed by the name of the file you want to transfer and save on your local machine. I go ahead and click Enter. And we see that transfers and downloads really pretty quickly because we're just going from server to server. I do another ls command. And we see that indeed our archive file is saved to our server. Now the one issue is, is that you see that this is in a tarball format. We need to un uncompress the file before we can use it. To do that, I'm just going to issue a tar command. There's basically a tar and two arguments. So we have tar, and then we have these switches. And if you want to know more about what these switches are, I'd recommend looking at tar's manual. And then it's followed by whatever the name of the file is that we're trying to unzip. I go ahead and click Enter. And we see that it's unzipped. So now I do an ls command. And we see that I have the original archive. And we also have a Drush folder. I can now go into that folder. And let's run Drush. So if you just run Drush without any arguments, you see that it's going to give you back a list of different arguments you can use with it to help you do administrative things with Drupal. There is one last thing we're going to want to do. Right now, I can only run Drush commands inside of this directory. But I'm going to want to be able to do it anywhere on the server. So we're going to want to go ahead and set up an alias. I simply put in the command alias, and then Drush equals, and the path on my server to where the Drush files are. I click Enter. And now I'll be able to use, whenever I use the word Drush, it'll be able to find the scripts no matter where I am on the server. So now let's go ahead and use Drush to download our Drupal files. To do that, I do want to move over to our web directory where our web files should go. We're currently in the Drush directory, so I'll move down a level and then move up to the public HTML, which is also aliased as www. So I just go to cd dot dot slash www. Now if I do an ls here, we see there are no files. To download Drupal, I simply go and do Drush, dl for download. And then I give it the project name that I want to download. Since we're downloading Drupal core, it's just simply Drupal hyphen and whatever version number I want. Drupal's currently on 7.0, but when you're watching this video, it might be on some other version, so you'd want to use that instead. And click Enter. Now what it's doing is it's doing a wget to pull the files over, and then it's automatically unarchiving them for us. The other nice thing is I didn't have to use that long URL string. I just could put in the project name. So if we do an ls, we see that indeed our Drupal files are sitting here. The problem, though, is they are one level too deep. I need to move them and bring them back. So I'm just going to do a couple of Unix commands that will move these files. So I do an mv, which is Unix remove, Drupal 7.0, slash, I want to move all the files, and I want to move them into my current directory, dot. I do an ls. We now see that they're moved. But there is one file that did not get moved. And if we go into the Drupal directory, we can see this. It's the ht access file. It's because it's got that dot. It's sort of a special file. So we're going to have to move that one separately. I just issue the same command, vm Drupal 7.0 slash dot ht access and dot ls. And my ht access file is now there. I'll tidy things up by removing our Drupal directory, do an rm, and just do it recursive, Drupal 7.0. And now we've got all of our files moved, ready for installation. Now we're going to see one of the really neat features of Drush, that we can do a single command line install of Drupal. Now this command is relatively complex, so I'm going to go ahead and break it down. The first thing, of course, you'll notice is that we are telling Drush that we want to do a site install. The next parameter, though, is do we want it to be minimal or standard? Generally, I recommend doing a standard install, so that's what we've selected here. The next two parameters are just the login information for our super user.
Basically, we need to give it an account name and we need to give it a password. The last piece of information is our string telling Drupal how to connect to our database. And so this basically says that we want to connect to MySQL. The database user is Acme Exam. Its password is demo1234. It's on our local host. And we want to connect to the database Acme Exam underscore tutorial. We simply click Enter. It asks us, do we want to confirm that we want to use this database? We go ahead and say yes. And it's going to take a few minutes to do an install. Incidentally, you can use this command to actually do a reinstall in case you want to wipe your database and start with fresh version of Drupal. And now it's done. So if we want to check out our website, we simply open up our browser and we go back to our site URL. And there's our site up and running. Drush is a very powerful library for managing Drupal. We only scratch the surface by seeing how Drush is used during installation. Typically, the next steps you take after installing Drupal is to go out and install several different modules. Drush also makes this a snap, particularly if you're using the popular Drush Make add-on, which allows you to define sets of modules that could be automatically installed together. Now, I do realize that this tutorial was more technical than the rest of the Getting Started of Drupal course. But even if you're not a command line techie, I hope the video opened your eyes to some things that SSH and Drush can do. You might find them handy as your Drupal skills grow.